Hello. Um, hi, my name is Igor, and today I'm going to talk about uh, the KYC orchestration and how to implement it. Um, we will discuss uh, how the KYC or KYB process usually works, what are the tricks that we learned from our past experience, and and I will sh show the short demo of uh, usage of one of the KYC provider. So thank you for joining. Um, uh, this session will be recorded and available after that. But uh, meanwhile, uh, please enjoy the live streaming from today's um, webinar. So a little bit about me. My name is uh, Igor and I'm CEO of Dash Devs. Um, we do quite a lot of um, functionality and software engineering in um, uh, fintech but also we are helping fintech companies and fintech projects to shape up and then go into the production mode um we've been doing this for quite a lot of time uh five, 15 years of experience we've been developing applications backend uh, we have different cases in united states in united kingdom we've been active in mana region but today we'll talk about quite generic process, which can be referenced to um, quite a lot of jurisdictions. Uh, we also launched uh, and helped to launch uh, more than 20 uh, products on different markets. Um, that's starting with the simplest uh, processes and simplest uh, products, uh, which are integrated uh, through the fintech uh, processes, for instance, integrations with open banking, KYCs, and so on and so forth. Uh, usually, our um, um, if we're talking about like banking solutions, our banking solution takes about nine months uh, from um, from scratch or from using white label solution to the market. Uh, we've been engaging with the financial institutions in different regions, um, companies like NotVest, um, Aspiration Partners in the United States, uh, Reg Bank. Uh, so we have a uh, quite impressive portfolio from us and um, we have a deep knowledge of integrating and working uh, with the vendors uh, across the market. Some of them we're using, some of them using our services for outsourcing and product development. Today I will share the information about the KYC and agenda is the next for 15 minutes uh, i will talk about the kyc processes and um, i will show the demo of usage of onfido uh, configuration i will do the overview uh, for the main logic or main objects uh, in processes in kyc uh, i will talk about orchestration i will uh, show how the what is the difference between collecting information documents liveness check and we will talk about edge cases and small tricks. And I will give short information about our FinTech core product. And then you will have 10 minutes for the questions if you have any. So I think we're good to start. Uh, thank you everyone joining. Um, so today we will talk about the uh, KYC. It's a process uh, which is uh, defined as know your customer. That's process for financial institution to comply with the regulatory requirements. Uh, it, usually it's several levels uh, on the legal side to make sure that the compliance process is properly set up. Uh, it depends on the uh, licensing process and a license of your institution. But uh, we've seen this process quite um, useful even for non-fintech companies. For instance, we've been working with an online uh, sport platform, which is doing the KYC for the kids who are playing uh, the sport game and their parents. And I think uh, since we're moving into the digital world, the process of knowing know your customer becoming pretty, pretty intensive and pretty standard. Uh, so I assume if uh, the this process involved the personal information at some stage uh, know your customer will be introduced and it's not uh, only connected to the knowing who is uh, participating or using your system it's also on financial risk side and financial crimes because uh, nowadays um, acting as someone in internet uh, might be an issue and uh, as we know there is a dark web where, where you can find a lot of um, data even the documents 
So I think this process, if we will go deep uh, inside of the process of knowing your customer, we will learn how we can make sure that we are protecting our customers and creating accounts for or um, giving the, an access to the financial products to people uh, which we properly onboarded. So the KYC is usually a referent for checking the person. And there is a similar process uh, for uh, KYB, which is referencing to uh, checking the business. And for instance, in different countries, it can be it can be implemented in different ways. Um, I think this process also uh, quite known for engineers. For instance, if you are opening accounts, let's say in uh, Apple Store or in Google Play, usually you are required to have the business entity, and then the entity is checked uh, by the DUNC number. That's one of the way to check the business. Uh, for instance, in the United Kingdom, there is a very nice government portal which is providing the information about the companies. There are references that can be used. So this process is specific by the country, but once again, it's similar to the KYC. It gives an ability to find out what is the company. It doesn't give an access to financial information or any private, but usually it's the way to identify the corporate clients, uh, vendors, partners, and we see that in many systems, not only fintechs, this process once again become quite popular. Uh, and uh, I assume that a lot of, uh, of you has been um, dealing with the different payment institution. And even if you are trying to open an account with the Stripe or uh, acquiring the funds, you are usually going through the same process. You are providing the document uh, documents from the corporate information, and then it's KYC. And after the successful approval, you are getting an access to the certain parts of the system. So KYB is similar to KYC, but only stands for the companies. Another definition, which is uh, quite uh, quite popular nowadays, is anti-money laundering. It's a set of the laws and regulations and procedures, which I actually aim to detect and report activities uh, which are legally obtained money or assets. Uh, once again, nowadays, it's uh, quite important because there are quite a lot of fiat and non-fiat systems. By fiat, we mean regular institution, regular ways to deal with the assets and money. And uh, as we know, there is a crypto world, which is uh, designed by default to, uh, to hide the identity and to not introduce any IML functionality. But we see that the crypto world is merging with them. Um, fiat systems, and uh, in those cases, the IML is have involved, KYC is have involved. So uh, we see that the process today is, it processes between two systems and two worlds are becoming more and more integrated. And those processes as KYC, YML, definitely there. And uh, if you have an experience using Binance or any other systems, you will know that all those uh, rules and checks are applied and also there. So IML, it's something that you're checking, not the person, but you're checking the funds and transactions. Uh, usually IML is involved also on the step of steps of creating accounts and checking the person, because as the first step, you're usually checking the customer for a specific type of the information, but then using this information, IML checks also perform. Another critical uh, item which is important nowadays is sanction list and sanction screaming, screening. So that's a process of finding out that the person, if you already know who is it, uh, and then you are checking the data against uh, the sanctions database. Uh, depending on jurisdictions, you might follow different lists. Uh, in different jurisdictions, you can download and uh, keep the knowledge uh, yourself. If you are, for instance, implementing, uh, you can not you you can usually go to the primary source of information and extract yourself and use it but it does this step is important nowadays as you see russia right now is um, doing full-scale invasion to ukraine and lots of lots of entities and personal per, people are actually in uh, sanctioned lists and uh, if you're operating in regulator regions you have to check uh, those sanctions and make sure that people on those lists, they are not getting uh, the financial or other types of the services from your product. So I would say that sanctions 
screening is really important and you should follow to make sure that you're compliant with the licenses and in your jurisdictions. Another important process, uh, sanctions impacts and involve freezing uh, financial and cash resources, admit, uh, admittance and restrictions on the specific individuals, um, also restrictions on trade, prohibition on providing certain activities to particular nations. So it's important to know that it's a different process from uh, the KYC or the anti-money laundering. Uh, screening is the way to identify and also sanction screaming is actually is working not only for your customers but also if you're involved in a moving transfer uh moving funds uh you need to check not only the customers of your system but the destination of the funds and services because uh, in this case uh you oblige to check the beneficiary information and if um information is not enough, you have to pause the transactions and do additional checks, ask for additional information to be compliant with those uh, watch lists and sanctions lists. Another process that usually is required by the KYC is uh, finding out and making sure that you're doing the screen for the politically exposed person. Is someone who is in prominent position, several step Perhaps people occupy positions that might be misused uh, to launch illicit cash or commit other uh, predicate crimes as extortion or corruption. Uh, that's another process because in this case, there are no sanctions list. And uh, usually this process more uh, crafted in-house. You need to check against third-party sources for politically exposed person, but it doesn't mean that you have to not open accounts or stop transactions, but you need to do extra uh, checks for anti-money laundering and control of the funds for those persons. Because sometimes a uh, politically exposed person might use your system or the funds for illegal activities or corruption, which we don't want to have in our products. Another important definition, which I think uh, we need to uh, learn today is authentication, because uh, usually the process of getting into the product or into the application, uh, we are calling in login functionality or something like that. But uh, frankly speaking, there are two processes. One is authentication. It's a process to identify that a particular customer is the person that he's saying. And it helps a lot to understand the KYC process because one of the steps that we really would like to uh, understand that if someone is creating an account in your system and providing the documents, we would like to find out is this particular person is uh, the person that he's submitting to you as collected profile data and the documents. And it's, it's quite really important because I've seen system design, they technically correct, they operating, and I don't think that they have issues with the compliance from the regulations, but they misusing or misdesigned the process of authenticating because they getting the information from the customers, but they're not checking that this customer is the same person as the documents has been provided. And to, one of the case, uh, it's a funny one. Uh, there is a hardware um, company which uh, developed the product laptop, which is using face authentication. And instead of using 3D uh, measurements of the face ID, they were running the checks against the photo, which means I can take the photo from another th person, open his laptop, show the, uh, the photo of this person to the laptop, and the laptop will unblock or will log in as this person. And that's a really good example of the authentication done wrong because in this case, we did we provided the access to the system, but we didn't authenticate the person because we didn't check that this particular person is someone who is he saying because I basically can show third party person photo. And that's why you should keep in mind before doing the KYC, we need to create an account and then actually by providing, by getting the information from the customer, match it and authenticate the person. That means that we know that if Igor is providing the information, that's the same Igor. And that's uh, the definition of this is authentication. And then authorization, that's another process, which is finding out what are the permissions for the particular person. Because 
if let's say I'm creating an account in banking system uh, before I've provided uh, the required type of information that runs through the KYC process, you actually need to not give me an access to certain functionality of the application. And once again, I've seen on the market the products which are not really uh, understanding those definitions and the implications that they actually give into the products. Uh, one of the FinTech products that I've seen, they've been collecting the information from the customers as the phone number and email. And by getting those information, they were generating their prepaid debit cards with a specific amount and ability to top up, but they didn't check uh, the uh, authentication, that's one, and they didn't properly run their KYC process, which means they didn't provide, they didn't check for the uh, location, for sanctions lists, for PAPs, which means someone can use their system in fraudulent way. Uh, they can top up an account or use those accounts for uh, fraudsting other people asking for sending the funds there, saying that they're another person or even uh, the fraud tricks that I've seen quite a lot in UK, uh, the uh, guys are calling to older people and saying that they have tax issues and they can avoid those issues if they will pay immediately. They providing accounting information, account information for sending the funds and those funds are actually sent to the third parties, and then uh, they move in and to doing anti-money laundering through the several institutions and getting those money away. And this is happening because the account is not checking that the funds are actually sent to the particular person and the authorization and authentication wasn't done in the right way. So it's pretty, criti pretty critical to differentiate those two types of processes and make sure that the system is designed in the right way. So um, maybe it's for later, like uh, digging into the information, but from my experience, it's really important. And let's move on to the next slide. Uh, the key for the successful products nowadays, I would say is a liveness check. Uh, uh, if you're using uh, more than new banks, you might notice that like a five years ago, it was okay to, while opening an account, you will provide your information, like first name, last name, date of birthday, and then the documents. But nowadays, uh, you can see that if you're having an ability to open an account online, usually the liveness check is happening, which means you can see yourself. Uh, there is a video which is recorded, and uh, on those videos, usually you are asked to move your head or to say specific phrase. And that's quite a deliberate process because in this case, we can check that the person who is providing the documents, then talking on the video on do, or doing specific actions is the same person. It's matching and it's called liveness check. And deep fake technology is not uh, there yet with the full scale. I would say you can do the deep uh, deep fake, but uh, if uh, every time with the liveness check, we have different phrase or different actions, um, it's hard to actually do the deep fake in real time nowadays. And the system is still able to find out that someone who doesn't have the documents or using third party documents can be caught because the uh, the we can match the face on the video and we can match the face on the documents and make sure that it's the same person with a certain level and a certain percentage, but it still works. And I think it's quite essential nowadays because more and more services are providing the onboarding processes online. And once again, by omitting this process, we might find our product in situation when we give it an ability to onboard third parties and open an account on someone else's behalf. Uh, which is not something that we want. There are quite a lot of uh, KYC, KYB vendors. Uh, you can take a look. Uh, there are quite a lot of names that are specific for the regions. As a company, we have an experience working with the, quite a lot of them. Uh, for instance, we've been working for years with um, Jubio, with the uh, OnPyda and Verif. In some cases, we even provide in our services for their development, but today we will focus more on the business logic and steps uh, for successful implementation. And um, uh, I would say uh, it doesn't matter which KYC vendor you are using, it's quite important to understand what you're collecting and what for. So usually for 
uh, successfully author authenticating the person, uh, first step is to collect the really basic information. Uh, that's um, that's first name, last name, which is really important date of birthday and nationality because uh, because sometimes you cannot actually understand if you have two different persons with the same first name, with the uh, same last name, what is the difference? And usually for checking against database, at least you need the date of the birthday, but it's also good to have nationality. In a lot of countries, you also have the middle name. It's important, but the, in this case, it's become harder. So let's, for this case, say that minimum requirements are those four fields. Usually, they picked up manually by the from the customer. Uh, sometimes you can read them from the documents, but if you would like to match this information, it's done manually. Or uh, as we've been doing for several years, we're using third-party OCRs from re to read this information from the documents, provide to the customer UI for the correction and manual edits, and then match with the document that has been provided. So uh, the next step is actually to do different kind of checks. The first one is uh, identity verification. So as I said, by getting the information from the potential customer, you have the first name, have the last name, but you do the match with the documents and that's called identity verification. Uh, after that, we uh, check that the let's say Igor is Igor, at least that's uh, what, something that we can find out by the data collected and the document, then we can do the liveness check and record those uh, live videos to understand that the person who provided the documents is the same person. Another step, which is, I think really important is risk assessment. Even if your system um, is, is not designed for the risk assessment for the credits or other kind of functionality. Nowadays, it's important. Uh, in some cases, uh, we've been doing the checks against additional databases. We've been doing checks against fraud databases like CFOS in UK. Also, we've been checking the persons for the voting database in UK for limiting the uh, type of the customer because legally we are not obliged in certain process or projects to limit the customers within the specific region or the country or the nationality. But usually it should be in your compliance model. Are you willing to take additional risk? How you're calculating those weights? And depending on those weights, is it acceptable for you to open an account for, let's say, with a specific level of risk of the customer? As I said, PEP checks and sanction checks. And usually this process is pretty um, heavy in terms of the business logic because before implementation, it's required to go down quite deep with the logic, write it down, make sure that this logic is leading to the results that you're expecting, that there is no loopholes or the, uh, the blocked status that customer cannot uh, avoid or go through because We've been seeing products in production in which you can actually combine your data and the documents the way that you're kind of stuck in a certain situation and you cannot restart your process because you already authenticated with the specific phone number or email. And the only way to get out is to recreate another account, which is once again, uh, the issue for your system because as, as you know, the checks are paid and usually they paste per transaction, which means if you're checking against the APIs with your third parties, each check will cost you money. And once again, it's in your business model. So in court way, design the system for the checks is essential because it's leading to more development hours, more issues for the support and more money because of the cost of the system. Uh, usually, and that's what I think uh, nowadays is a little bit different from the market. If you take a look on the websites of the, sorry, just a second. If you are, if you are taking a look on the suggested way how the system should be implemented from the third parties, they actually suggest to integrate their SDKs or their products directly into your platform. Uh, it means that the data collection and documents collection is happening on their behalf in your applications and directly go into their system. Uh, my point of view is a little bit different because 
I usually suggest to do the data collection and documents collection uh, within your tools and then store securely, which requires more uh, development or more possibilities from, for, uh, from your products, but it gives you really additional perks because in this case, you can do the read KYC because you are controlling the data and you are, uh, over, you, you are managing it, which means you can, let's say, they want to use one KYC, but when you are moving your customers to another system where you would like to read KYC or do additional checks, you have all the required information. And in this case, you're really in control of the sequence of the checks, because I would say nowadays it's quite important to have more than one, um, uh, more than one KYC vendor. And that's really advantage because the suggestions from the market are different to use those uh, APIs or SDKs directly in your applications or your client facing um, uh, applications. So, uh, and then after collecting the data, collecting the documents or the videos, storing them securely, you should have process for dispatching the KYC checks. And um, uh, as any integration, it should have in the design the system that allows you A, to restart the checks because in some cases, uh, let's say the documents might have a glare and uh, you will need to re-ask uh, for the information from the customer or the system for some reasons can be unavailable on the vendor side. And in this case, failing with the correct information, you will give a decline to the customer, which is not really nice. And uh, properly designed the system is really important. We will talk a little bit more about that. And after that, you would like to have a system which is getting results because usually KYC vendors, they can approve your customer, but it's more importantly, I think, for you to extract all available information about the checks, store it in your system and do the decision making on your side, because in this case, you will be more in control by altering the checks, by altering the results, uh, by creating more sophisticated and more flexible system, which is adapted to your customers. Because if you're using KYC, uh, decision-making, it might not fit into your old cases. So having something as a step five on your side helps a lot. Uh, that's a really high level overview of the scheme that we see, for instance, for uh, starting with the phone verification process, as I said, authentication and authorization. We are tailoring the KYC check to the specific phone number. And in this case, we are storing the documents on AWS service as F3 documents, and then running the checks against the own FIDO system uh, and the tap sanctions checks. And after that, we are delivering those results to our KYC engine, which is giving us an ability to understand the status, do the additional checks if it's required, and then get back to the customer with the notification that he has been approved and the system works as expected. Uh, that's a just draft um, um, skip and really high level, but from this you can understand that the process is uh, sophisticated and it complex and having issues in this logic might lead to quite bad issues. Uh, one of the real life examples, uh, for instance, even getting the infrastructure might be hard. Uh, we know one of quite big FinTech project in the United States, which has been fined for 50 million fine from regulations because they built the system really great, working great with really nice UI, UX, and uh, I would say fairly sophisticated KYC process, but at some stage, uh, their configuration on production allowed a public access to the storage of the personal information, and they leaked about 100,000 customers' uh, documents in public. And that led to the fine from the regulator, and I think it's important not just to design the system that it works, but design again different risks like managing the information, managing an access, making sure that infrastructure and robust and run well. And even if you're using third parties as uh, uh, KYC vendors and storing the data directly, 
sometimes actually the third parties having bugs and issues. And if you are relying on their system, and uh, sometimes it can be leading to the issues on their side that documents can be exposed, for instance, or the system can be unavailable, which means your system cannot then get the documents from the customers and upload them. So in this case, you should think about the edge cases uh, yourself and design the system that actually is uh, performing well with those edge cases in scenarios. For instance, this system is designed that we are storing the system on our, uh, the documents on our side and videos on our side. And then we are able to retry or do the additional checks if the system from the KYC vendor is not available. And um, uh, there is a little bit uh, of my view how the uh, rule-based approach for the vendors can, can be done. Uh, usually uh, the system is reviewed as a possibility to integrate one of the vendor. I would say uh, if you build in the global company or global fintech project, or you would like to do the KYC in different regions, I would say that the system on your side, which is rule-based depending on the country, the type of the documents, or even the pricing, can regulate the checks against different KYC vendors. Uh, what we learned, uh, which is important, is to properly design the system if it's serial checks or concurrent, because you can simultaneously go to several vendors and check the documents against. But uh, it's up to you and up to your needs. We have quite a lot of experience how to do it right. So it's important to know that you should think about that and design the system in correct way. Vendor pricing, it's another topic which is important. As I already said, uh, that's paid service. I, every time when you do the check, it costs to the vendor because they're using computation power to check against the database and supporting the system means, means they would like to have some model on top of that. But for you, it's also the cost. And, First of all, it should be in your business model because if you are calculating the price of acquisition, it's not just one check because usually you have to perform several checks before in, in global numbers. Uh, if you have 100 users, definitely before getting 100 users approved to the system, you will have to do more than 100 checks. And it really depends on your sources of advertisement, type of the product, who is uh, target market, and it should be factored in. I've seen quite a lot of cases when this item has not been properly designed and properly sought through through the product way, and then it was causing literally money issues for the companies because they didn't have proper budget for checking. So that's one aspect of the vendor's pricing. And another one is properly designed in the system that you are checking against the cheapest uh, vendors first, and then additionally rechecks with the higher pricing. And uh, one of the really good example in UK is the CFAS database. That's a membership-based fraudster database, which allows you to check the customer or potential customer in their database. And they have uh, not a per transaction costing, but membership. And in this case, you might find someone who you will not allow to be in the system, which means the pricing will be less because you will not check against another KYC vendor. So it, it's something that you should really consider during implementation of this functionality. And uh, another hot topic is the failed cases because when you're designing your system and designing your business logic, you need to think about the fail cases. Not everyone successfully will go through the uh, KYC process because uh, usually even with the first name and last name, there are uh, issues like a fuzzy logic because I might type my name Igor with a G, but if you're using Slavic uh, translation, it might go with the H, Ihor which means in this case, it's different from the documents. And I, might, I will might end up in the situation when I have been rejected because in my official documents, it's spelled one way, but during typing, it's another way. And in this case, uh, fuzzy logic sometimes is implemented for finding out the differences in the spellings, usually if it's not Latin-based language. Uh, another uh, usual issue is with the photos um, and documents because because while you're doing the scanning or the cameras, 
uh, devices are different, the types of the documents different, and you might face the situation where the glares or not enough resolution, and it should be designed in your product way because if someone isn't bored with their phone number, the picture is not um, up to the needs of the KYC manager for finding out and matching the information, the customer will end up in into the fail mode. And if you ha don't have the cases for it, even through the support, the result situation, the customer will not be happy, will not be using your system. And meanwhile, you spend certain marketing budget for attracting those people and they will fail. And I think it's quite important to know that not everything is perfect as the data or the photos or the videos. So you need to design the product flow, which involves that. And if as early you can detect those issues, you can actually uh, cost, bring the cost down. Uh, for instance, in our project, usually we're using additional OCR for creating and making sure that the photos that we are taking in proper quality and after that upload into the KYC, which allows us to re-ask for the photo and ask to retake because the light is not enough or the quality of the photo somehow is not something that we expected. But once again, it's a late two-way road Asking too much means you will cut the numbers of the customers and having more customers, but having more issues, you will get the cost in more than you might expect or put into your business model. Small tricks that we used so far, uh, as I already said, is really essential to keep the data and files on your side. We've been seeing situations when the, uh, the product has been vendor locked uh, because the third parties with uh, for the KYC has been used. And uh, in this case, not all the vendors are given an ability to export all the data. All the export might be even implemented manually. So you need to go to each customer, download the report of files, and then somehow match them through the system. So what we suggest is to design the way and architecture that you are owning and keeping the data from your customers first on your side, and then using integration with the vendors. Another trick that I already talked uh, is to prepare and verify the data by making sure that you're at least OCR in, and reading the information, doing some previous rechecks between the data collected from the customer is matching. And um, another one is properly designed the checks uh, through the vendors that you start them with the low price checks first and then doing more sophisticated logic and checks. I hope it will help you to structure your system. Um, uh, you will have an ability to ask questions if you have any. And um, right now, uh, I okay, it's not the last slide yet. So let's go a little bit more. Um, as a company, we've been dealing with the KYC quite a lot. And that's a part of our FinTech core product. Uh, we are proposing a source-based white label solution. It can be cloud or source-based with the different models. and the second model that we actually think is important for the customers is KYC and IML orchestration. So we have an engine which is helping you to collect the data from potential customers, store it securely on your end, and then run the checks against the third-party databases and vendors. And in this case, you will not have to develop it yourself. You can use our product, which is ready to use and helps you to run more effectively. And um, uh, Today, I will show a short demo of the potential process of the KYC, and we'll talk what is the difference uh, in different scenarios. So today, I will show, uh, just a sec, I will switch off my camera, and I will show them uh, functionality from OnFido by designing the workflows and then doing the KYC check on my documents. It will not be live check, but it at least it will give you an ability to understand how it's potentially working. So you should see a screen right now with the OnFido uh, back office. Uh, usually, as uh, you have an access to a KYC vendor, you have two types of the access. That's API-based for the engineers and integration, and the back office, which allows you to configure the product and um, see the checks results. Today, I will show two parts. The studio, which allows you to design the uh, KYC processes. Uh, all the vendors are becoming more and more technical, so let's do the KYC demo. 
uh, workflow. And um, uh, if you're creating those workflows, you can create different versions of the checks. Uh, it's some kind of repository. And um, uh, the on Fire is giving really nice way for selecting workflows from templates. Uh, let's say you're in different regions. Uh, and for those regions, you have the preset functionality, let's say with the simple one, simple documents in Southwave workflow, which allows you to not record the live video, but ask for the documents and selfie and that's that much it. Uh, they have really nice split for them, different um, uh, industries like a financial services in this case, you can uh, check for the core verification with the watch list for the biometric core flow and the, the sanctions list additional checks or uh, really important workflow for doing the re-authentication because sometimes people can lost uh, the access to the authenticated application. For instance, if you use NeoBank, you might damage your phone and then we need to onboard the customer or authenticate customer on your device by just simply giving an ability to uh, get an SMS or a second factor authentication to a new device, you might uh, use this backdoor or this logic to allow uh, fraudsters to uh, hijack the account. But usually if uh, an activity requires getting a new device authenticated, sometimes the real authentication is implemented, which means you're asking for additional documents that the customer has. And then by providing those documents and rechecking them with the existing customer information, you can re-authenticate a new application, even if the customer is lost in access to phone number or the device that, that has been used before. And there are different types of the checks, for instance, with the driver verification or in gaming uh, cases and so on and so forth. So uh, let's start with the simplest one. Uh, let's say we will check the simple document and selfie workflow. Um, it's uh, fairly simple and works uh, well for different uh, cases. And the workflow, uh, we can zoom in. Uh, the workflow usually is really uh, simple and straightforward as we talk through the flights. So you are starting with workflow with the profile data capture. At this step, you basically uh, check in what type of information you would like to get, country of the residence, first name, last name, date of birth, additional information. And then you're capturing the uh, photo uh, of the documents. And then you're capturing the face capture to make sure that you're uh, comparing the face similarity for the customer. And by getting the document report and getting the similarity for the face uh, with this workflow with the conditions uh, which are defined here uh, that the documents report is clear and the face similarity is clear you can get the applicant approval as as i said usually you would like to integrate through the api which means you are getting those reports and you can use the third parties as uh, in this case to make the decision or you can just extract the report and do additional checks on your site uh, so it, it's pretty convenient with those designers, but I would say still you should implement certain part of your logic because in this case, you will be over control over your business process and you will not be vendor locked. So I will show another um, uh, workflow which I created before and it's active. And actually, it's a simple one to show uh, how the profile data capture and documents capture is working. So we can uh, live preview on the web, and it will generate the page that can actually be used for uh, running the live check. Uh, it's Let's say it's a web application. At some point of application, you will have the button to start um, KYC. And one of the examples that I've seen, and I've never uh, thought that I would see the KYC, it was buying the ski pass for my kid. And on the website, in this case, for granting an access for the discount for the kid's ski pass, the, uh, the system was designed to do the KYC for the documents. It means that you're not relying on the customer for providing the correct answer that the key is eligible for the specific type of the key ski pass. You're basically asking for the information, then matching for the 
information that you got from the documents. And by that, you can find out the decision yourself. And it is pretty wise because in this case, third parties will not exploit the system by getting the type of this key pass, which is definitely cheaper, and you will not uh, get to the financial losses. So in this case, it's just a simple example. Let's say that we have Igor, uh, my last name. Uh, in this case, uh, it's asking for the country of issuing. Uh, I'm the citizen of Ukraine. And let's say that I would like to use my passport. And use it, as you can see, the system can be designed to pick up different types of the documents. Sometimes you might require two documents because uh, as you understand, nowadays in the internet, there is a dark web, which allows you to buy in bulk different kind of information, which also involves uh, personal information like passports. And the systems which are designed to read two types of the documents are more robust against those uh, fraudsters, because in this case, usually you rarely find the data sets with the two type of the documents. Um, that's not the case for this demo, but you should know it. So usually the system on the web is once again should be designed the way that it can be continued on the phone or upload the photo. Uh, in this case, it's a little bit strange to provide an ability to upload because the file can be customizable. But anyway, let's try this. Um, uh, I will pick, let's say, some kind of uh, screenshot, which is definitely not the photo and or the document. And let's try to see what uh, on fighter will do. And it says that the document is not detected. So in those third parties, if you're using their documents or their SDKs, they have certain really nice uh, functionality to detect this information. Usually if you're implementing yourself, from the scratch, it might be an extra mile for you to, for the implementation. But I think if we're comparing managing information and getting those items out of the box, I would say if you go in large scale, it's important to implement yourself. So let's say I'm checking the Quark document and I'm checking and I can see that the document has been successfully checked in live and which is more importantly, I can go to the results. Usually they're available also once again uh, through the APIs. And you can see first check was waiting the input because I didn't provide the correct one, but the second one which happened in live has been approved. And uh, there is information which is provided by the, uh, uh, by the APIs. You can get uh, specific information for the applicant details and the status. It's really simple. Uh, and you can build more complex workflows and more complex process, but I assume that it gives you a really good sense of the capabilities and the items that you can should keep in focus. So let's go back to the slides. And in this case, thank you for watching the slides that I've prepared for today. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask them right now, or you can use the QR codes to book a call with me or email or connect on LinkedIn and then ask the questions. So guys, do not hesitate. You can unmute or type the questions into the chat. I think... Uh, there, are, there are no questions, so thank you for attending. It was a pleasure to talk through the KYC process and what is important. Tomorrow we're going to share the screen uh, grabbing of uh, screen sharing of this uh, webinar. And thank you. And looking forward to see you in one month. We're going to cover another topic, which is helping you to improve your skills and the knowledge in the fintech space area. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Bye.